we're back again with Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rashumba, aka Nana Ajua Sika Cody the First. And my guest again is Na Ayoko Mawasa and Pese Asafuanya One, meaning Warrior Queen, the first Rasta Warrior Queen here in Ghana. Here in Ghana. And so, so the question she ended the last conversation was she asked her mother, Why did you give birth to us children here in? UK, UK, England. Why didn't you stay in Jamaica? So continue, yes. my sister. I asked my mother, why, 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 why you come here and every day we are get up and we are here fight the white man? So for 16 years, eh, I was vexed. When I left school at 16 years, yeah, two years after that, when I was 18, I born my first child. Okay, we at 18. Me. At 18. Were you married or uh, it just a relationship? It was a relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. me, born, me, me born the first child at the age of 18. And I said to myself, you know what? I said, you know what? But I'm closer to Africa from here, UK, than I am in Jamaica, you know. And like how I'm here, I'm going to make my way back to Africa. That you was right me? after you had your first child? This is from, 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 from. From I was at school, and my mother tell me, say, we are not Jamaican, we are Africans. From that day, then me say, me I go back to <laughs> Africa, and Africa, me I go back yeah. to. Right. Who say nothing, nothing? We back to say, Africa yeah. movement, me yeah. I live with. You get me? Not Jamaica. Yeah. My mother tell me, say, Rasta from Bullbeer grew a sheep. A Rasta from Bullbeer grew my mother. Because when Fia mother in a childbirth, the mother died. So I Rasta grew up my mother in a Jamaica there. And Rasta, you know, for those that don't know Rasta, what do you explain to them what you what Rasta is? Rasta, Rasta people, not to dread. Locks. Locks people grew up my mother. Right. And they have, me? Yeah, they're special people. So we're not going to go into that because that could take yeah. a little while. But yeah. she's a Rastafarian so, woman. So my, my mother always mm. says that, you know. We are not Jamaican, you know. We are African. So you had one child? I had one child then. Okay. And in having that one child and maneuvering your way, what how did you make a living in the in, in, in UK having children? Let me but, tell you, know, you because how. you did say, you know, you walked around with a a knowing spirit that to them seemed like an angry spirit. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah. Knowing where you've been and where you came from yeah. and how you came back created this vex mentality yes. and energy yes. and this vex mentality and energy you Me carried with you wherever you go yes. in the place and wanted to go back to africa if i could have walk even to jamaica them time there i would have walk when okay. i was a child because i hated the uk my sister i watched my sister turn mad in the uk because her spirit wasn't meant for the place right, right right my sister her spirit every year my sister uh, 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 her birthday come. It's like my sister turned more mad, more mad, more mad in the UK. Wow. And may I watch my sister, may I watch my sister. I say, you know, sir, her spirit was never meant to be in the UK. So what happened to you, that sister now? Hey, that sister. Yo, man, let me tell you, sir. Yo, man, when my mother and father die, it's like my sister won't die too. My sister nearly have nervous brought down when my mother and father died. Okay, so it affected her when it you affected her. Yeah. So till she had to go into she had to go into this 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 okay. care place. Okay, you get me? Is she younger sister? No man, older than me still. Okay. So I had to go and talk for my sister for make she come out because my sister too. Yeah. We were vexed people growing up in the UK. So we were vexed vexed people and growing up. As we up. all know, when you know history, you know. You know, the UK represents to a very powerful country in the world. You know, um, when we think of our enslavement and the challenges that we have gone through, we understand the part uh, that country has played. And so, you see, when we say Rasta, you know, we understand it comes out of, I believe, through Jamaica. Yeah. All right? And Jamaica being a colonized country some time ago by England. Yeah. So to be born in England from a parents that had the experience of being born in Jamaica, there's all kinds of emotion that is going yes. through the children. Yes. And to yes. be in an environment that does not 
treated in the way it should because it can't because it's the creator of that feeling. <laughs> so you had a very unique experience that, um, you know, to survive that is, wasn't going to be easy. It wasn't going so to be easy. So you had many children. I, I, when I, I born two in Coventry, yeah. In, in, Co in, Coventry. in Coventry. Is that an area? That was the area where I rise up. But because of the racism I went through there, they said, me now go make my picnic them school there. I have to go and find where black people there. Mm -hmm. So that is where me got to Birmingham. That's another see. area in UK. Yes, Birmingham is, is a another. Is that a black area? Yeah, man, black okay. people did that. So it's that so I go to grow my okay. youth them. So let me ask you, what did you do for a living there? Oh, I'm a, I'm a knitter, I'm a painter. I'm an I'm a interior decorator. Mm. Anything for the inside of the house, me do. Wow. Plus, plus more. Yes. You get yes. me? Plus more. Yes. You get me? So, so you had your children and yeah. you supported them. Were yeah. you married? Yes. The man was there. I wasn't married to the man because the man was uh, one of these woman beaters. You know, so you can't be true the way me talk. Yeah. Me think so everybody who grew in the West, them parents grew them the way my parents grew me. You get me? Yeah. But I know, so it got. Okay. So it your parents like showed you no matter what, they got you, they love you, they support hey, you. Hey, let me tell you something. My mother and father, never, they lost their friends. My mother and father lost friends for this one here. Because my mother and father wouldn't put nobody, before. none of their friends would come before me. Uh, you can talk and my mother will call me. And she will make me talk the truth in front of their people then. She's not going to so, take big people's word. So you see, when there's a mission from the universe, from the creator, to bring forth that which was laid dormant. Because that's how our sister started yeah. the conversation. She spiritually remembers when she was one of those that jumped off the ship. That left the coast of Africa, heading to the Caribbean. She's one of those that jumped off. And was swept into a place where she lay dormant. Dormant for 400 and more years. years. And in that dormant, when she did come into the world, July 3rd, 1963. That is when God said. Me, yeah, she spoke to the experience. So when you go to the first part of the video, you know, this is going to be segment three. She, You will hear her story there. But I was just saying that, my sister, because, you know, you got the support of your family. Because yeah. your mother was the chosen woman to bring you forward. Yes. And she knew what to do. Yes. And so you say you have how many children? Because we're going to move I have, it. I have nine children. You have nine, nine children. children. How many boys to girls? I have five sons and four daughters. You hear that? Not only is she a queen that she mentioned, but she is a mother. Five sons and four daughters. All right. Nine children. And all, look so good and so yeah. powerful. All the days of my life, I was Africa bound. Nothing, nobody, now go come between me and Africa. So you end you up, me? did you bring the children to Africa? I brought, I brought the youngest three, the eldest ones are left there. Okay. Because they were schooling and everything. Okay. You get me? So the eldest ones, them are left there. My oldest one right now is 42 this year. Okay. Bless you say. get me? And the youngest ones, they came from five, eight, and nine which today they are 23, 26, and 27. So you live in Ghana for a while then? Yes. How long have... Tell me about your experience when you came to Ghana. Huh? My experience... As when far I as came, when you came, why you came, and before, how that before, before I even came to Ghana, you know, we have to go to tribulation. I'm the one who got you queer tribulation. You never just come to Ghana like that. You get me? And I oh I made a vow to my God that the day I I I, I step foot back on this soil, that the works what I will bring for my people is what I'm going to do. Okay, here. so yeah, so because basically, I made a, the mission a, was accomplished. Before the mission was accomplished, you had to go to tribulation. And when you go through tribulation, I went through tribulation. Challenges. I went through tribulation. Yes, hard. I've been beaten. I get caught up with knife. Here? 
in our England there. In England. They get caught up. The spirit that is in me, they want to kill me feet. But I overcome all my challenges in there for me to be here today. You get me? Here in Ghana. When I came to Ghana, first time in come to Ghana, to me never go to Jamaica before. So me have to learn everything new again here. So, so for those that don't speak the language of uh, Jamaican, she, you know, she has not been to Jamaica. But rather than go there, she felt she needed to I come had to here. be on the soil. I never felt safe until I was back mm. on this soil. Right. Even in a UK herself, I wouldn't even take off my coat. I would never take off my coat in the UK. And me never sit down in a new chair like this yet. Me always sit down at the edge. Mm. My father used to look for me and say, P, you know, take off your coat. Me said, Daddy, the place too cold, man. Me can't take off my coat, yeah. So you were prepared to move at any given I moment. I was, I was, the place wasn't my hand. So and how did people take you, the normal, so-called normal day-to-day -day people? How did they take to you when they saw you? Oh. Because even when I saw you here, you moved differently. Yeah, man. You moved that's with how, purpose. That's how, that's how, that's, how, that's how, how you moved there, too. That's how I moved there. And they were frightened eh? by you, weren't they, at when, eh? when you walked, the way I, when I like, walk, let's get the check, we got to go. Eh? <laughs> when, I, when I walk, people, they, they will watch me. The Sikhs, them would watch me. And the way me dressed to me, in my African girls. Always. Yeah, man, from England. Okay. So if you see me in a four-piece, and when the Indian them see me, they used to watch, and they used to bow. They used to bow like this. Then they used to watch me. Oh, they me bowed? And, yes, man, the Sikhs, them. Wow. If I put on a garment in England, you know, me make my garment, you know. So my, my garment, them special, yes, you know. Yes, yes. When I put on a garment in the UK, one time I had to run in a taxi and take off my garments. I, I put on a white, red, gold, and green. Everybody I wave to me like, say, me name Queen Ashiba mm. in England. I mean, I feel run in a taxi, go, go back on my yard and take off my garments. Mm. Because my wrist was hurting for the way I waved to people that day. To hey. huh? Because knowing who you are showed up in how you carried yourself. In, in the UK. So, so yes. when you see people in our society, you know, that have been indoctrinated in their society, that have forgotten who they are. I they, never they, they, forgot. You know, twice. Twice. Wow. Me broke them law in England. And twice. White man clap for me when me I broke law. That's up. Yeah, clap man. For you. Yeah, man. They clap for me there. Let me tell Did you what. Did you ever end up in your system by any chance? Never. What? GL? GL? Yeah. Never. You see? GL? Never. Get yeah. me. So they watch my children, my boys. Because the white man then couldn't get me. Talk about how they deal with yeah. our sons. All right, let me tell you how them deal with my sons, yeah? I'm a somebody, when I used to walk UK, me dress in a military, the green military. Me have on the soldier boot, red, gold, and green around my waist, and I will walk. And when the police see me, them watching me. Eh? Police go looking at them electoralists there. Then they say, wait, this your woman have five sons, and none of them never in a trouble yet. Let's go make trouble for these people, you know. Yeah, man. And because the young people don't understand, and sometimes they don't hear the voices of their parents, yeah. because the education system keeps them thinking in their way, yeah. and the fantasy illusional world they live in that pulls them. Because, you know, when you're yeah. young, there's a certain yeah. level, unless yeah. you've been born like you were yeah. born, with an intention yeah. from yeah. your ancestors. Yeah. They easily get our children. Yeah. Was there a conflict between your children and you? I mean, when you talk to them, they wouldn't listen. They say, Mom, it wasn't you're... even that, no conflict. Okay. It's like a direct setup. This woman has five sons. Let's cause trouble with them. So they caused trouble with two of my sons. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. Two of my picnic them then caused trouble with. Yeah? Kept on causing trouble. Not just my children black children yes. who were there and i think you black I, mothers I, out there understand huh? what that means black mothers know what uh, it means to raise when black me say, when me say 
When me say, some of the youth, them in the UK there, when you say, when me say, helicopter in a ear, a chase we pick me them from motorway. Yeah? Did you hear what she yeah, said? Yeah, 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 man. Let, let me say it again in... When you see the helicopters in the air, the helicopters. You guys understand, you know. We're African chasing understand. our children. Yes. Eh? You see, if it's night time, you see helicopter with spotlight. Pan we pick me them or drive. Hey, hey, huh? So, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this again, and we're gonna elaborate on it some more.